Hey everyone, Wayne Fox back with a video I promised last week. I did a video about how to use third-party papers in your printer and focus mainly on Epson printers because I have a couple of those. But the process is pretty much the same. You go get some information from the paper manufacturer, including the profile, download it. And one of the things you have to know is what media type that profile was built on. And a lot of reasons for that. And if you want to understand those a little better, go back and watch that video. I'll throw a link up there in the corner. But the bottom line is you have to know what Epson media type that profile was based on. For example, I was using Hanamule Bamboo at the time, and that profile is based using Epson Velvet Fine Art Paper. Not a big deal until you start using several third-party papers, and suddenly you're trying to remember, okay, what media type was this paper based on? What media type was this paper based on? You got to keep a list. You got to look them up. And the good news is if you have a P700, P900 printer, uh, Epson P7500 series or 9500 series printer, when you install the driver, Epson installs a new application called Epson Media Installer, which dramatically changes the way you use third-party papers and makes it uh, just really, really terrific. Basically, it's a no-brainer. And once you understand how cool this program is, you definitely want to use it if you're using third-party papers and have one of those printers. If you're not, I don't think this will work with other older Epson printers. It doesn't install when you put the driver in that I know of, but I don't have an older printer to really test it with. So if I'm wrong, let me know. And then if I'm wrong, I'll put a, I'll uh, link something in the description below. Uh, take a look there. But anyway, I'll just show you real quick how cool it is, and then we'll show you how to set it up. Let's just jump into Lightroom and let me kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. So here I am in Lightroom and I'm going to really quickly go to my page setup, make sure I've picked my P900 printer, and I'm going to go to print settings. And under my layout, I'll go to printer settings. And you'll notice that if I click on my media type, if I go to fine art paper, I don't have to choose Velvet Fine Art because I have down here in this menu, Hanamule Bamboo. How cool is that? I don't have to remember that anymore. I can put all of my custom papers. Not only that, but when I go to my printer, if I go and choose my paper type there, Hanamule, Hanamule I can't even say it, Hanamule Bamboo is listed there as well. Uh, if you use a lot of third-party papers or even a few third-party papers, this is definitely something you want to use because it will make life easier for you. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to install Hanamule Bamboo into my 9570. And once I do that, we'll actually show it on the printer how we can set it up. And it's a choice right there in our menu. First, let me jump back into Lightroom. Let's go again to print settings. This time, let's pick the 9500 series printer. And under the printer settings in the paper types, you'll notice that I do not have on a mule as a choice. All right, so what we need to do is jump in over to an empty window and open a new finder window. Inside the applications folder, when you install the driver, uh, here we go, you'll uh, have an Epson software folder. Inside of that, you'll have an Epson media installer folder, and then there's our application. We're just going to double click on that. Let's close that finder window. We don't need it. This is going to go out to the printers, I believe, that are currently on your network and look and see what's installed in those printers. It takes a while because they're uh, it's actually talking directly to the printer. So your printer needs to be on and connected, obviously. This does take some time sometimes. So you'll see that under our P900, we have down here Hanamule Bamboo as an editable uh, paper type. It's listed as a fine art paper, and that means that's the menu that it's going to show up in you'll see that some of the Epson papers are listed as registered and removable. So for example, if you don't ever use exhibition fiber, legacy platine, these other papers, if you click on that and it will go into the printer driver as well as the printer itself, it'll remove those. So when you look at those pop-up menus, you can simplify them quite a bit. What we're interested in is going to the 9500 series and we'll switch to that real quick. Again, it says it takes several minutes, and indeed, sometimes it does. It's asked me this a few times. I'm not sure why. Um, it seems like the helper tool should have been installed. Probably some security setting I need to research, but I don't use this program often enough to worry about. I'm not sure why this takes so long because it seemed like it did it already. 
when you launch the program. Uh, but there, that took about uh, that took about two minutes. So if we look down, we don't see Hana Mule. What we need to do then is we will pick the paper type that the paper manufacturer used to make the profile. In this case, it was Velvet Fine Art. We're going to click on that. Up here, you'll see there's a duplicate button. We're going to copy media. This will make a copy of Velvet Fine Art. Again, this does take quite a bit of time. All right, so when we now have our copy, but what we do is we want to go to our copy that we made, and then we'll go up here, and this means we want to edit it. Obviously, you need a lot of patience to do this because for some reason it's pretty slow. So here you can see we can pretty much make anything we want here. We can give it a new name. And I don't know, I never can remember how to spell Hana Muley, but we'll just leave it at that for now. So this is the media type. This is base, basically this will, wherever you put this is whatever pop-up menu it will be. So you could put it in other if you wanted. This is the platen gap. And here we can say, well, we want to increase that. I found that if I went to 1.6 in that printer, I had a little better luck. This is a drying time. We can increase how long it takes the head to go back and forth. This will actually let the head pause. Uh, roll tension. This is how hard it pulls back on the paper. Uh, sometimes you can pull it extra high. So you don't have nearly as many settings to modify in the uh, P900. But as you can see, you can pretty much customize anything you want specific to the paper type. Roll paper, you can say that, okay, in the you want more or less suction. In the cut sheet, we found that giving more suction actually helped quite a bit, so we'll go three. We'll leave screw reduction on. Here you can set the paper thickness. Now, what we need to do there is go see how thick the paper is. So we're gonna jump back over to our uh, web browser, which doesn't look like it's running currently. On a mule. And I think if we go this way, bamboo specifications. And we go to right here. You'll see that this listing uh, right here tells us it's 0 0.50 millimeters. Uh, we could go and get the full spec sheet, but this is really all the information we need. If we went to the product spec sheet, we can find it. So we're going to go back over here. And you'll see that it's slightly thicker than Velvet Fine Art. So we'll go ahead and put that in there, 0 0.50. Top margin millimeters 15 is pretty standard. Most of this stuff that you don't you don't really need to change. The only other thing we need to do is we need to go find the right profile. And I didn't actually realize this, but with every media type, there is an associated profile. Now we installed this profile in the last video, so we're gonna just go find it. It's gonna be in our boot hard drive library, our system library, not our user library, under color sync. Under profiles, under printers, because we decided to organize under printers, and then we decided to organize them based on that, and there's our profile. So this paper profile is actually stored with this paper setup. I'm trying to find out if you use let printer manage colors, if it simply means it's going to use the profile that's associated with the media type. If so, the results would be virtually identical whether the printer manages it or whether Photoshop manages it. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's how it works or not. I've got to ask somebody that knows a little more about it. Anyway, once we do that, we hit OK. And we can apply edits to the printer. We hit OK. Again, you have to be patient. This takes a little time. <laughs> what it's doing is it's actually loading this information directly into the printer. And I'll go show that once we get this done, as well as into the printer driver, which we'll also take a look at. And there we go. So Hana Mule Bamboo, probably spelled wrong, is now listed here. Let's real quick go to Lightroom. I think we're going to have to quit Lightroom and relaunch it to get it to show up. We'll do that just to be safe. And let's go to Print Settings. And we'll go to our P9500. 
down to printer settings. And now we should see Hanamule Bamboo as our choice. So now we don't have to remember anything. We just pick our paper. We can get rid of a, quite a few of these you can delete. And down in the others, you could probably delete all these. You might be able to make others your third-party paper menu where the, all of you are there. So you could put in your Moab Entrada, Hanamule uh, Rag, uh, whatever, you, whatever papers use. Real quick, let me just jump over to the printer. Let's show how we load that in the menu. Okay, so I've inserted my sheet of bamboo. You'll notice I've uh, put it long ways. There's no reason to print a 13 by 19 vertically just because that's the paper choice Epson gives you. Make a, paste, a custom paper size for those prints. Uh, turn your paper, prints you know, 20, 30% faster because it just has to uh, not go back and forth as many times. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, ins insert the paper. We're going to go cut sheet, complete. Okay. And here now we're going to go paper type. And if we go down here and we go more paper types and go to fine art paper, we'll notice down here we have Hanamule Bamboo now as a choice right in our printer rather than having to go to some other Epson type. So it's really easy to get it right. You have 10 different custom papers, and I think you can put up to 10 different custom papers in the printer. There is a limit. I'm not sure how many it is. But anyway, we just pick Hanamul Bamboo and OK, and we're ready to go. We now have a custom paper type. All the settings are perfect for this paper. They're not just really close. And because it's based on the ink load of the original paper, the profile will work just fine. Now there's one other feature that I'm not real familiar with and I'm not haven't really been able to figure it out, but it's called media download if we look here. And if we go to this section, we can see uh, just hundreds of different paper types. And I think what Epson's trying to do is make a system based where you can go and find a paper from a different vendor. For example, you could, uh, um, Go to a media vendor, and here we could actually find Han and Mule. And yep, I did spell it wrong. <laughs> and for the printer, and then we could search. And what it would do, I believe, is the media vendor can supply this data to Epson. So you can load it directly, and that gives them control on all the settings themselves. So they can basically make their own paper types for Epson. I can't find any that are available yet other than Epson's. Um, if we go to Epson's, we can see that we can locate all of Epson's papers here. And if we have one that's not installed that Epson makes, it's one way to install it into your printer. So I'm not sure where this feature is going. Um, you can see here I have some papers that are say they're not acquired, and I assume that I can go get them. I'm not going to do that for this right now, but I think that might be a cool feature in the future. Anyway, I hope that you find that was useful, and you can use Epson's Media Installer. Uh, thanks for watching. See ya.